Drive up your engine! Okay, here we have an 09 Honda Civic. I'm gonna show you what repairs should be done now and what repairs, hey, you might wait a while on. Now this particular Civic, when you drive it down the road, get it going 30, 40 miles an hour, you can hear a roar coming from the front with your wheel bearings. So we're gonna jack it up and feel them first. You can see this car's led a rough life. All this plastic stuff supposed to be all tied in, but it's hit so many things it's coming off. We'll put some electrical twist ties in it later to hold it in so it stays on. Three and nine o'clock, and there's no play at six and 12 o'clock. Basically, this wheel bearing is not physically worn. Then we'll do the same here. No play, no play. And while we're here, you can see, people have rigged this side with a screw <laughs> to hold it in. Maybe we'll do the same thing on the other side. They have matching screws. Because this side's coming up too. <laughs> now we're going to look at the tires. See if they have any odd wear. Because tires with odd wear can make noise. We're spinning around. It's pretty round. There's no real lumpy spots. And we'll look at the tread closely. It's got a lot of tread. It's not really dry rotted. So this tire's okay. And this isn't a particularly cheap tire, as you can see here. This one's still made in the USA. It's not some Chinese junker. I'll go to the other side and we'll check this tire, see if it's out of ground. No, it isn't. And let's see if it's the same kind of tire. They love hiding things nowadays. Made in USA. And it's also a Kelly tire. It's the same brand. And again, when we look at it, it doesn't have any really odd wear. The tires are fine. And they're not dry rotted. Now in this case, a Honda Civic with 140,000 miles on it, the wheel bearings are starting to wear. As they go down the road, you hear a roar, roar, and the faster you go, louder the roar, you're going 60, it roars pretty loud. Now, with all that mileage, the wheel bearings, the metal bearings, they're coated with grease, but you don't re-grease them, they're sealed for life. They're certainly worn, but it's a relatively expensive job replacing these wheel bearing assemblies. I had a customer with the same type of Civic, this kind of noise. I said, drive it and see what happens. Five years later, he was still driving the car. It was still making noise. It was a little bit louder, but it was still drivable. Now, he didn't take the car from Houston to California and back. He just drove it around in Houston. I'm going to tell the customer, hey, if you want to spend all this money, feel free. But this thing can still last quite some time. When you jack them up and they have actual wobble play, yes, it's time to change them. It can be dangerous then. But these, they're just starting to wear. And since it's metal, Metal can go a long time, make noise with the wheel bearings, but still not enough physical wear that you'll even feel it when you play on it. In this case, I'm going to say, you should just live with that for a while. Now, I'm more concerned to the customer is the AC. She said it makes a lot of noise, so let's turn it on. And we'll open the hood and listen. Now, indeed, you can hear some clacking. You can hear the fans howling, but see that clacking? We'll go inside and turn the AC off. I'm sure there's still noises. But you don't hear the AC clacking. I'll leave the camera here and turn the AC back on. Now it does take a trained ear, but I can hear the bearings whirring. Those are the bearings of the AC compressor. It is wearing, but being a Honda, it's still blowing cold. So what should we do? Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I've been working on these things for ages. I'm gonna evacuate all the refrigerant with my recycling machine, because you can't vent it to the atmosphere, it's against the law. Then I'm gonna fill it up with a factory load of refrigerant and an ounce of air conditioning oil. Oil flows through the air conditioning system and lubricates the compressor. Sometimes I do this, it gives a few more years out of these compressors, because if you wanna buy a compressor for this, I only advise buying new ones. You buy a new compressor, you should change the condenser, the expansion valve, the dryer, by the time you're done, you're well over $1,000 with new quality Honda parts. So, we're gonna do this, and then we can see how long it lasts. All right, my machine has taken all the refrigerant out. I've got an evacuation recycling machine, but I don't recycle the stuff. I send it to a place. They take it off my hands because I do not believe in sucking it out. We don't know what kind of contaminants are in it and then reusing it. No, I store it in a container. When a container's full of 30 pounds, I take it to an AC place and I give it to them and say, hey, I don't want any money. You guys want to recycle it, fine, but I won't use it. I only use fresh virgin refrigerant because I know what's in that. I don't trust what's in these systems. I have no idea what anybody's done with them. Gotta fill it up, but 
How much? Well, Honda's pretty good. They still have stickers on them. As we can see here, it says maximum 0 0.450 kilograms. Is that zero? We'll open them up. Now it's gonna fill it. So it says 0.450. It's on its way. We'll start it up with the AC on. And we'll watch this until it's 0.450. It might take a little while. Because I'm adding refrigerant gas. It's in a gas form, not in a liquid. I could turn my can upside down and put a liquid in, but if you inject that liquid directly to the compressor, you can ruin the compressor. So take my advice. Be patient. Add the gas until it's got the right amount. And while that's happening, we'll make sure the cooling fans, they're both working fine. Because if the cooling fans aren't working right, the pressure will get too high, it won't work right. We're doing this work, make sure everything's working. Look in front of the radiator. See if there's bugs blocking flow. All inside here. See the flashlight, look under here too inside. You want to see if bugs are jamming stuff up. Because if you drive a lot at night, especially in a countryside, bugs are going to cover the grill. They block airflow. You don't want to block airflow. The condenser and the radiator both have to get free flowing air. I've even seen plastic grocery store bags jammed in there. That can ruin them too. Make sure everything's clear. Now, as I said, it's going to take a while because we're adding the vapor. It's now at 0.362. But however much of a hurry you're in, don't be. Don't put liquid in. Only use the gas. You don't want to destroy a compressor that we know already is somewhat weak with 140,000 miles on it. And as we can see, there we go. Got about an ounce of AC oil. Hook it up the same way on the low side. This one just snaps on. Then, since the handle broke on this ages ago, they don't make things like they used to. I put my little vice grip on and I turn it until an ounce has gone in. One, two, three. There it goes. I just pop it off and remember to put the cap back on so dirt doesn't get in there. There it goes. Start her up. Put it on max AC. Roll up the window. And stick a thermometer in to see how cold it's going to get. The way we go, it's already starting to feel pretty cool. We'll take it on the highway. Now after five minutes, the temperature is already down to about 42 degrees. You can't complain about 42 degree air. That's nice and cool. And you notice while we're sitting, it gets a little higher. It's going to 50 something degrees. But once we get moving, it starts going down again, closer to 42 degrees. Now that's normal for a car like this that has 140,000 miles on it. The compressor's worn. It no longer operates at peak efficiency. But once you go rolling down the road, like now, it's even under 40 degrees. It's 30 something degrees. As vehicles wear and get old, the thermal efficiency of the AC system goes down, but it's now sitting at about 38 degrees and we're just cruising along. It's not gonna get any colder than that. There's no sense in buying things now. It's still blowing cold enough. A lot of the noise has gone away. See how long it lasts before we throw over a thousand bucks into this thing. And as you can hear the humming now, turn the AC off. Hear that humming? That's the wheel bearings. They're warm. But they don't have any play in them. You can live with that for quite some time. See now, it's still about 38 degrees. So now you know a little bit more about things you might want to live with, things you want to fix on the sly, try a little refill, a little oil to make the AC last longer, or when you'd have to give up the ghost and buy another compressor and condenser and dryer and expansion valve and spend over a thousand bucks. Now only time's going to tell on this repair, but from my experience of 52 years, Sometimes this will last a few years more. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Keish Lorraine says, I got an 08 Lexus LS460. My ABS light is on. It has the code U0131. Lost communication with power steering control module. The power steering control module operates a lot of stuff. And it has to do with even the anti-lock brake system. Now, the code that you have is saying it's lost communication to that module. So the first thing you want to do is go to the module itself. And if you're not mechanically inclined, have a mechanic go to the module. When I fixed, the connector had gotten corroded and that's what tripped all the codes. Now they have computer modules all over the place on that, but it gave you at least, let's say it's that module for the power steering. So you go to that module, A66, and if you find that it's corroded, take it off, clean it all off, 
put it on and then seal it. Sealer that's not going to allow moisture to get back in. Because I've seen moisture get in those things. And that's exactly what happens. They trip that code. Start right there. It's a good thing that you got that code because I've worked on weldings that had different codes that were much harder to figure out. But that at least is telling you something's going on with that power steering control module. And the one I fixed, it was where the wiring plugged into it. That a66 wire it was just corroded it was green took it off cleaned it sealed it and away it went so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell